This is part 2 of the AM8 build series and we're doing the electronics installation today, starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel, welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing and if you're here for the first time, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So in today's video we're integrating all the electronics into this AM8 frame that we've been building in the last video, so check that out if you didn't see it yet here. We're gonna get this printer working again, doing some test prints to see first results, and then in the later stage we're going to have a look at an in-depth review of the print quality, the build quality, what you can expect if you upgrade to this frame. So let's get started. So I'm starting with the belt installation on the x-axis and that was missing in the last video. So it's quite easy. Um, I can reuse the old belt and reuse also the old belt tensioner. However, I wanna replace that with a new version soon. Now on the y-axis belt installation, I have to say, I think it's a very good idea to mount the motor vertically. That's gonna make sure that the belt is running more straight and you can adjust the straightness of the belt very easily by moving the belt holders. And then uh, what I also like is the way how this belt is inserted into the block on the H-frame. It just slides in, so you don't have to use any kind of screws, any kind of um, zip ties, it's just fitting there and then you're tensioning it. You have to be careful that the belt doesn't touch this mounting block. Next part of the electronics installation is to mount the mainboard and the MOSFETs to the mainboard holder, which is then going to be attached to the frame. And also I am mounting the mainboard cooling fan. One thing that I really wanted to make sure when I rebuilt this printer um, that I have a very clean cable installation so um, everything is gonna be uh, accessible and still look very very tidy. To achieve a clean cable installation while still being accessible, I decided to use these printable cable managers uh, where I run all my cables through. Finalizing the attachment of the power supply. And then I finish wiring everything up very, very clean. Then I made a last minute decision to turn the MOSFET for the heating bed. So uh, that makes the cables run more straight and they are better accessible and there's less stress on the cables. So here you can see the cables for the heat bit are going to run downwards now and the cables for the hot end are going to run upwards. So I think we're halfway through now. We installed the power supply and also the mainboard and the power cables are already installed. So the next thing to do is to route all the sensor cables and the motor cables to the mainboard and also to install the extruder so we can get this thing printing again. So let's go. Here I'm installing the Y-axis uh, end stop switch. Um, so you have to drill two little holes to mount it to the rod holder. I didn't yet decide how to upgrade the hot end and the extruder, so I'm still using the original one, and, uh, but that's probably going to change in the near future. So I expect um, nothing really to be different. Uh, so this is gonna work probably right away. Coming to the heat bed installation, I didn't expect anything to be different. I wanted to reuse my nice thumb wheels. However, I discovered that they are going to interfere with the Y-axis rod holders. So I had to go back using the wing nuts and here where the Y-axis end stop switch is, I even had to use an M3 nut. Finally, I had to make sure that all the cables run straight to the extruder, there's no stress there. And also I cleaned up the cable installation on top so everything is a nice and clean package. 
Here I want to point out that I originally wanted to mount the display to the top of the frame and I did some pictures and posted them on Instagram and you in the community pointed out um, don't do that because you want to reduce your printable height significantly so I made the decision later to move the display down to the left side of the printer. So thanks for the pointing out that. And now it's time to do some initial electronics testing. Let's see how this works. So now the printer is ready to do its first test print. I'm starting with a little Benchy just for this video so we can have a quick first look at the results. And then in the next video, I'm going to do an in-depth review of the print quality and what we can expect in terms of print speed versus quality on this new frame. So let's have a look at a first result of a Benchy print. So what do you say? I think this looks amazing, uh, really stunning. Um, I'm really blown away by the amount of detail here. Taking a closer look at the surface quality, I really feel that the layer quality is really high so there's also no signs of ringing. When we compare this with another Banshee that I printed on my old Anet A8, you can see clearly that there's a lots of ringing around that little hole there. And if we look at the new Banshee from the AM8, you can see that there's almost no ringing visible anymore. The same applies for the steering house. So this is the old print containing a lot of ringing. And this is the new print, uh, which is stunning. Um, just really awesome. So on a quick first look, you can see the print quality is much better in terms of the layer quality and also there is much less ringing. So these first results are really impressive. I have some high hopes for future results if we go with larger prints. However, I want to have a more in-depth look at it in the upcoming week. So this printer is now going into the workshop and it's going to stay there printing for several days larger prints so we can have a look at it in a later stage. And also I want to see how printing speed is going to have an effect on the print quality. So thanks for Future is Maker for making this frame. It's an awesome frame. Also the look and feel is really nice. By the way, if you like this t-shirt, it's available on Teespring. I've put a link in the description down below and also use the discount code that's gonna give you a 30% off during the Black Friday week. So go there, check it out if you like it. It's available in multiple different colors. Also, please add a comment in the comment section down below if you like the video and also what you would like to see improved on this channel. And I'm gonna draw a winner for or a free t-shirt from all of the comments of this video. So go there, add a comment, and you're gonna be in the raffle for a free t-shirt as long as Teespring can ship it to you. So that's it for today. And if you liked it, please like, subscribe, share all the good things. So see you next time on our channel for another video about 3D printing and more. Have a good week, bye bye.